As we transition from a very challenging 2020 to a 2021 filled with opportunities, it's important that we seek the best ways to increase income at this time. Doing the things in this video will increase your income and it can happen now. A new year always brings hope and optimism for resolutions, changes, and especially goal setting. 2021 is no exception, and in fact, we may have greater optimism for change than ever before. This could be your best year ever for fundraising and increasing income. I've devised a six-step plan for helping you increase income in 2021. Step one, conducting a situational analysis. It's important that you analyze the impact of the last year. 2020 was probably the most challenging year for your organization. It was for me, and I've been doing fundraising and development for more than 36 years, but it forced me to be more creative than ever before. I'm someone who enjoys routine and consistency, and I especially don't like surprises. Last year, we were frequently forced to pivot and flex, often at a moment's notice. Virtual events replace live events and face-to-face -face appointments and relationship building. The most critical part of fundraising and development came to a screeching halt. So the impact was great and probably affected your ability to raise money. Therefore, you'll want to evaluate what sources of income did increase and which decreased. In many cases, the letter phone strategy filled the gaps where we lost income. Countless organizations actually saw great increases in direct mail income. A seasoned direct mail expert shared that COVID may have boosted direct mail by 10 to 15%. Without a doubt, income from events were reduced greatly even if you were able to do a digital event. There were exceptions for some organizations who made the same or more than a live event, but few saw virtual events increase over a live event the prior year. Without the benefit of face-to-face -face appointments and challenges, Organizational leaders had to rely on phone calls, but only after they felt comfortable the donor's income was not dramatically impacted by the pandemic, thus delaying appeals at a time when funds were needed. Fortunately, in a large number of cases, donors or partners gave the same amount as the year before, and even more as donors and partners helped to fill the gap for income lost by out-of-work donors or partners. All this data should help you to see where your need to focus your time and efforts are in 2021. As we slowly come out of this pandemic and hopefully move to a post-COVID period, you'll want to see relationships reestablished and fundraising activities return to normal. Step 2. Set Income Fundraising Goals you need to determine what projects, efforts, or portions of your budget need funding and set income goals for each. Goals set at the beginning of 2020 went out the window by late March or April as we moved into survival mode. As we hopefully move into a post-COVID period for summer or fall, we can reevaluate our New Year's goals and see if those are realistic. Perhaps we'll be at a point where we can once again feel comfortable and set optimistic goals. But throughout the year, we should always be prepared to adjust the goals upward or downward, depending on the circumstances. But setting goals is not an option and should not be put on hold. You should factor in that when live events start to come back, they may be at a reduced size. That doesn't have to, but could mean less income. And as you start to meet with major donors or partners, understand that some may not feel comfortable meeting individually until summer or even fall, depending on the distribution and success of the vaccine. Step three, target your time, relationship building, and appeals. It's critical that you begin to focus your time back on the things that are going to have the greatest value or return on investment. Ask yourself, what's going to be the best use of my time each day, each week, each month? Most fundraising plans focus in on three priorities. 
The first priority is major donors and partner relations. In most cases, the best use of your time will be relationship building and actually asking for a gift. Reestablishing the relationship that may have been negatively impacted by your time in isolation may be critical. Start now to finish off any thank you calls to those major donors or partners who gave it year end and plan the strategy for year round cultivation and move management. For all donors and partners, establish a major partner plan. I created a strategy years ago that I call the 333 strategy for cultivation. That entails three visits, three phone calls, and three letters in a year's time. This can be done by planning one letter or note a month, then one phone call the next month, then one visit the third month, and then skip a month and start the process over in the fifth month. You can do this cycle three times per year and complete the 333 cultivation time with your donor or partner. At least one of those calls or visits should include an appeal. If your donor or partner is local, then you can visit them. But if your partners are out of town or in another country, you'll have to be more creative. The amount of their giving or potential will determine whether it's worth investing money in a trip to go see them. You may have to replace one to two of your personal visits with a phone call or video calls. Priority number two, virtual or live events. You'll want to make a decision on the feasibility of doing a live event in 2021. As I've mentioned in past videos, doing events in the middle of a pandemic has been challenging to say the least. Unless something changes dramatically with either the virus or the vaccine, most states will stay fairly restrictive throughout the spring. Very few organizations will be able to do an event with the same size as before or even larger than pre-pandemic times. So the best case scenario is that you'll do a, a much smaller event adhering to government size guidelines and safety precautions. In reality, most of you will probably have to shift to later spring or early summer to do a live event or in reality shift to the fall or the spring of 2022. I'll be producing a video soon to discuss the options for live events in coming weeks. Priority three, donor communication. Communication with our donors and partners has never been and will never be more important than it is right now. Continue with your current strategy of email marketing and newsletters if you're doing those already, and you may even want to consider increasing the frequency from three to four times a year to eight to 12 times a year. If you aren't doing either, at least begin email marketing, newsletters, and appeals, and perhaps even a hard copy newsletter if you've got an older audience and have the funding to do so. Priority four, public relations. Be as creative as possible to keep your name in front of people, donors or prospects. Newspapers, radio, television stories about your organization will help raise visibility and let people know you're still making a difference and that your activities have not been put on hold. Step four, learn more about fundraising. It's important to never stop learning that apply, and that applies to fundraising. Read the latest books on fundraising and development and focus on, in on areas you wish to grow, whether that's relationship building with major donors or writing effective e-blasts or newsletters or working with foundations. I'll include a reading list in the description below, but one of my favorite books on fundraising is entitled Development 101 by John Frank. Other great books include Donors Are People Too by Tim Smith, It's Not Just About the Money by Richard Perry and Jeff Schrieffels, Money, Possessions, and Eternity by Randy Alcorn, and of course any book by Gerald Panis. Watch videos on YouTube like this and other channels and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're really looking to increase your income. Also, seek out podcasts if that's the way you like to learn. Some people enjoy book on tape or podcasts while driving. Step five, learn about fundraising tools available to you. There are a number of great fundraising tools out there and you should seek out the help of experts. 
teamgold.co is one of the best websites on development principles and practices. It offers great articles, videos, podcasts, and such on major donor relations, events, and other fundraising topics. For those doing events, such as banquets, dinners, athons, there's a software called Ministry Syncs that's amazing. It's an online software for registration and event management. Step six, integrate into the community or explore new ways to get your message out. Increasing income doesn't just include lifting your current donors or partners to a higher level of giving. It also includes cultivating relationship with prospects or suspects for new gifts to your organization. Oftentimes, that includes getting into the community and just meeting new friends. Join social organizations or business clubs and get to know people and understand so that they can understand about your organization. I mentioned earlier that's important the importance of increasing public relation efforts by using the media, but take advantage of speaking opportunities and offers to use your expertise to be a resource to others. Being of value to others will increase people's interest in you and will drive giving and income. I'm optimistic that this coming year will be an exciting time of transition from time of COVID to post-COVID. You can't afford to sit back and do nothing. It's important that you seek ways to increase and do it now. If you're looking to increase your income and found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the next release. Also, post a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if there were topics or questions you'd like to address. For videos similar to this, click our video or playlist listed above. To watch other videos related to nonprofit fundraising, go to Development Effectiveness Strategies on YouTube. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.